Now, Benvolio runs over to the church. Uh, so I'm going to turn this. We're going to say over here is the church. All right. He runs over to the church. Romeo is waiting in the church to find out, with Friar Lawrence, to find out what's going to happen to him. Uh, Benvolio comes in and says, guess what? He explained everything that happened. He's like, you're banished, but you're not going to get killed. And Romeo goes, be merciful. Say I'm going to get killed. Because death is better than being banished. Juliet is here, and I can't live without Juliet. You don't understand. I'd rather be dead than have to leave this city and have to leave without my Juliet. And the friar goes, Shut up! Shut up! Do you not see how lucky you are? And Romeo's like, Lucky? You call it lucky? I have to leave my you wife and went along with all my heart. And the friar goes, Listen! How many times in the last 24 hours should you have been dead? Hmm, let me see. Tybalt was going to stab you at the Capulet party, but old man Capulet, of all people, saved you. And we know that he's a scumbag, but he saved you. And then let's see. When Tybalt came to attack you this morning, when you wouldn't fight him and didn't draw your sword, he didn't stab you then. Tybalt, who we know has no honor at all, wouldn't stab you without you drawing your sword. Let's see, that's twice that you were lucky. And then you kill him, and you were supposed to have be killed for that. But no, no, you just have to leave town and you're all right. Three times in 24 hours you should have been dead, and you're not. And you think that your life sucks? Wake up! <laughs> I bet you don't understand the way I feel. You don't understand how it feels to be me. Shut up. Listen, you got to get out of town. So, get to Mantua. Go to Mantua. I will send you a letter. I'll figure out how to do it. I don't know what I'll do. I, I need some time. Just go to Mantua. Stay there. Don't do anything till I send you a letter or come in person for you. And I don't know what I'll do. I might get Juliet to you. I might bring you here and then get you both out of town together. I, I don't know yet what I'm going to do. But you got to get out of town because if you're seen here, you're dead. So put on this robe. Big robe, right? Because he's a church. He has those big church robes. Put this on. Get out of town. Get to Mantua and wait for my letter. And he's like, okay, okay, okay. So Romeo gets out of town. He goes to Mantua, and he's waiting for a letter from the friar. Well, now we're shifting scenes to the Capulet mansion. Old man Capulet comes back home, and <clears throat> they go up to Juliet, and Juliet is still lying on her bed in her room, she knows none of this. She's still waiting for nightfall to come so that Romeo will, will come and see her. And so she is over here, and she's lying there on her bed, and she's just there like, oh my gosh, sun, go down. Oh, this is the longest day in eternity. She keeps like going over to the window, and she's like, oh, stupid sun, go down. And then she comes over, she's like, I'll try reading. And she reads for a second. She's like, I can't concentrate on this. And she goes back over to her window. She's like, oh, the sun hasn't moved even a little bit. She's like, oh, sun, go down. Come night. Come sweet, gentle, blessed night. Bring me my Romeo. And she is just, can't wait for the night. And then they come in. And... Her mom comes in, Juliet's mom, and says, Juliet, I have some bad news for you. And Juliet's like, what do you mean, what happened? And she says, Tybalt is dead. He was killed in a street fight. And Juliet starts to cry <laughs> because 
She liked Tibble. Tibble was her cousin, right? He was a jerk to everybody else, but to her, he was nice. So she starts crying because he was her cousin. And she's like, how did, how did this even happen so sudden? And her mom says, Romeo Montague killed him. And then when Juliet hears that Romeo killed Tybalt, you know that ugly cry? <laughs> she goes from the ah, mm, to ah, she starts to just ugly cry about that. And we know why, right? Because now she knows that her husband is wanted. But her mother doesn't know that. And her mother's like, I know, I love Tybalt so much too. I can't believe it. And Juliet's like, no. <laughs> And her mom is like, I'll leave you alone. I'm so, I'll leave you alone. And her mom goes out. And her mom goes out and tells her dad, oh, she's taking it so hard. It's just, it's, she, I, I've never seen her cry like this before. She's just uh, beside herself with grief. And Juliet's dad, being a man, is like, I can fix it. I can fix her sadness. She had bad news that made her sad. So I'm going to give her some good news to make her glad. And they'll even out and she'll be exactly where she was at the start. Because that's the way emotions work. So he goes and he finds Paris. And he says, Paris, I need to talk to you. And Paris is like, yeah? He goes, I know I've been kind of you know, wishy-washy about the whole Mary and Juliet thing. And I know, you know, I've been kind of dragging it out and stuff like that. But Juliet's feeling really sad about her cousin Tybalt's death. And I need to give her some good news. So I'm telling you what, I'm going to move up the marriage. You can marry Juliet tomorrow. And Paris is like, sweet, <laughs> right? Awesome. Like I, uh, doesn't give me very long, but I mean, all I got to do is buy the tux. You know, I, I'm, I'm good. Like, I, I can make that happen, right? So he heads off to get the tux and get ready. And now Juliet's dad, Old Man Capulet, is going into her room to give her the good news that's going to fix her. So he goes in. He's like, Juliet, guess what? I have good news. And she's like, I can honestly just some good news right now. <laughs> anything good and he goes honey tomorrow afternoon you're getting married to Paris yay and she goes uh, yeah no uh, no I'm really not I'm not gonna marry Paris tomorrow and he goes what did you say? And she says, uh, uh, she's got to come up with a reason, right? She gets a really good excuse. She actually says, uh, it's just, it's just so sudden, right? Uh, she goes, um, maybe uh, like a week. Uh, yeah, give it like a week. I, I only saw him that once at the party. And I mean, I mean, just, just give me a few days uh, and, and then it'll be fine. Cause she's thinking in her mind, yeah, I'll buy like a week of time and that'll give me time to, to, figure it out, go to the fryer, get with Romeo, whatever. I just need some time, right? And so she's like, give me like a week. But freaking Capulet doesn't hear anything but her say no. And he goes, how dare you say no to me? And he slaps her. I hate this guy. He slaps her and she falls down. And he says, you will not make me a liar. I'll tell you what, you're either gonna marry him tomorrow because I said to him that you would or you will crawl, scratch, beg, and die in the street. I will let, I will hear your fingernails scraping against my door and not let anybody give you so much as a crust of bread. You will die or you will marry him. So you might want to think about it, little sister. I've made my choice. And he walks out. And she is like in the fetal position on the floor. And she's like, she looks up and her mom is there. And she's like, mom. Mom, please help me, please. And her mom says, you made your choice, I'm done with you. And walks out. So now Juliet gets up, 
puts on some, composes herself a little bit, and she decides to go to the church because the only place she can go is to the church, right? And she goes to the church to see what the friar wants her to do. <laughs> 